Hey legends, welcome along to the show. I'm your host, Rodney Stewart. This is Here's Rodder's Reviews, and we're getting onto an episode of He Man and the Masters of the Universe called Eternal Darkness. Now, this starts out fairly dark. <laughs> so, uh, everybody, at the beginning of this episode, uh, are having nightmares. Now, it is given away with the visual. There's like a little haze around it, so you know it's kind of like either well I thought perhaps at the beginning maybe a flashback you know you do get that sort of effect on screen whenever they're doing a flashback of something on a show so we have Prince Adam and Cringer getting chased by these beasts and they don't have the power sword they can't call on the power to call to change to He-Man and Battle the Cat everything seems lost we discover this is actually a nightmare that Prince Adam is having and uh, we cut from that to the King and Man at Arms and Taylor they're all having different nightmares and we discover that this, there's this uh, enemy returning called Dark Dream he reveals himself to Man at Arms and the King through the dreams and when everybody wakes up he man, or he man, Prince Adam and Cringer realise that they had the exact same nightmare, which calls up the, you know, this is strange territory right here. So everyone gets together, they start to work out that this guy was, Dark Dream was defeated at some point in the past and he was banished, sealed away in his. Uh, I was going to say to him, but it was his cave or whatever, wherever he lives at, on Eternia, he was sealed away in there, so they couldn't cause any harm. So it turns out there's this drilling or explosion mining going on in a part of Eternia, and they're using extremely high-powered explosives that, you know, as pretty much in the, the realm of, you know, this is probably illegal to use these explosives they're that strong so these miners whoever it is we don't actually get to see these guys but it's more of a a story it's more of a, a point it's something to use within the story this is happening this is an element that will come back later in the episode to try and defeat dark dream but it, basically he has the help of uh tavor and uh, evil in to help him escape. The uh, thing is, he can't come out in the daytime. He's one of these creatures that only survives in the dark. And uh, if nighttime falls, his power will be stronger than ever. So he wants evil in and Tavor to use their magic to bring Eternia into complete darkness forever essentially but their power isn't strong enough to do that Tavor was his power as Evelyn said isn't strong enough on Eternia anymore the sorceress made sure of that so in the past this guy had his ass handed to him by the sorceress his powers were you know knocked down a few levels and uh Evelyn can't do it with her powers, but combining with the power of Tavor, he, his power isn't as strong on Eternia, but he can uh, manipulate things outside of the planet, so they decide they're going to create an eclipse of the sun, so they use their powers to move the moon across the path of the sun, creating darkness on Eternia for as long as this guy wants it to last. The only problem with that is, he can't control the moon properly and even though he's created an eclipse of the sun the moon is now on a collision course with Eternia itself so when darkness happens Dark Dream escapes he's going to go for Castle Grayskull uh, the sorceress not knowing who or what has caused this has transformed into Zor and left Grayskull uh, Stratos is there to help her. It's been a while since we've seen him on the show. But uh, the two of them get captured. Uh, the problem is, uh, 
the heroes can't rescue the sorceress without revealing that she is indeed the eagle, Zor. That's a secret just like He-Man that they were told was never to be revealed. Uh, the problem with this whole s scenario is the sorceress in the form of Zor cannot use her power. She is only strong within the confines of Castle Grayskull. So they have to find another way out of the scenario in this episode. And that is He-Man needs to basically blow the moon back out of orbit of Eternia and that's where this extremely strong explosive comes into play and by the end of the episode they actually fall like a a rock full of this stuff and He-Man's like you'll be careful here uh, there's enough power in this here to destroy the entire planet and he uses his super strength to chuck this thing into the sky and blow the moon out of orbit and the day is saved uh, of course the moon moves out of the path of the sun daylight returns and this is this destroys dark dreams power he disappears along with his henchmen that's the last you see of him at the end of the episode uh, everybody's happy content the sun's out, let's go have a picnic and Orko is like, that's good, no problem at all I'd bring the food and his, his hat opens up like the little uh, boot lid that it is and this basket appears from inside it and then uh, of course things not going properly a little rain cloud comes out and rains on Man at Arms again so we get, in this episode just like the last one we get you know, either him getting soaked by water or a rain cloud raining on him and uh, when Orko tries to fix that there, he actually ends up putting Man at Arms inside a bubble. So there you go, there's another connection from the original show to Masters of Universe Revelation. So, you know, hate Revelation all you want, but there is quite a few callbacks to the original show within that show. And it's been that long since I checked out the series, like, you know, I missed a lot of the Easter eggs. But uh, yes, that whole Oracle in the bubble thing that was in Revelation has clearly happened before in the original series, so it was all good. This was a great little episode. This character of Dark Dream was interesting. And uh, the whole nightmare scenario was a pretty cool one. Uh, fairly dark for this show. Uh, but again, that was the, the 80s. Didn't shy away from a lot of stuff. So the PSA at the end of the episode was, you know, Tila comes on then she says, and the story I had a nightmare and it was scary and whatnot. And you know, if you, if you have nightmares, it's nothing to worry about. We all get them. It's no more real than uh, any science fiction story or bedtime story or anything like that there and if it is bothering you and you'll talk to your your mother or your father or a close friend that'll make you feel better so that was pretty much it for this episode uh very very enjoyable